Inhibitor Lune. Your inhibitor has been destroyed. Ah, my apologies. What I meant to say was Dan Hung Imbibitor Lune, former member of the High Cloud Quintet, former criminal to the Xianzo Lao Fu, and current member of the Astral Express, is the character that we're going to be talking about today. And I'll be honest, the first and only thing that I really knew about this character was the fact that he had something to do with the moon and lotuses because of the design that are both on his, you know, character, his name, and his outfit, and just the overall attack where he spawns the lotus. And I just think that that thing looks incredibly beautiful and it is very funny when you destroy crates and everything just flies off into, like, the oblivion. And that was really the extent of my knowledge. However, upon researching further and beginning to look more into his character, I found a lot of interesting little details that just made everything feel so much better. In all honesty, I think that a fair amount of y'all can agree that Imbibitor Lune is exuding with flavor because the design department just did an amazing job on his character. Like, literally, you guys adore him so much to the point that the word Imbibitor shows that as a top result in Bibiter Lune's name meaning, that being Drinker of the Moon, which again is so freaking amazing and cool. But yeah, legitimately, like there were so many things that just stood out to me when I was like looking into this character that I genuinely think that give him so much life and it's just incredible. As always, in this video, we will be going and focusing on the character's gameplay flavor and impact, with flavor being the main category where a lot of my personal biases may influence these decisions, so do take what I say with a grain of salt. Now, if you want to learn more about these categories, I highly suggest you go and check out my video on the best designed character in Honkai Star Rail, where I go much more in depth among all these categories, but in short, uh, gameplay talks about anything that is related to the characters, you know, gameplay, so attacks, ultimate skills, just the text of how they attack. Flavor, on the other hand, is anything that is not related to combat or just the game itself, so, so to speak. So this essentially includes voice lines, animations, text messages, things that are beyond what a character is when you're actually playing them. And finally, impact is any kind of story relevance or what they provide for the in-game lore. Also, we will be seeing mostly Don Hung in Bibiter Lunay's form in this video, so a few things will be left out so that we may tackle them on to in a further video when we are talking about Don Hung, also for future content. Whenever I mention the name Don Hung, I will be, mention I will be referring to his 4 star version. Well, when I say Imbibitor Lune, we will be using the 5-star version. So, with all that out of the way, let us see why Imbibitor Lune was perfectly designed. As many of you know, Imbibitor Lune is a member of the Vidyadara, a race of dragon beings that possess mastery over water. This is the reason why he and Bailu have both animations related to water for their attacks and skills. We even see Don Hong create some rain in his idol animation, hinting that he may potentially be sad. Kinda like Nouvelle-Head, honestly, so I like that a lot. Ah, but in all honesty, being serious again, it had never occurred to me that that was a potential connection that both Bailu and Imbibitor Lune could have. And, I don't know, it's just, I just thought it was very neat. But more importantly, the thing that really stood out to me was the fact that he was specifically a Watcher Dragon. Now, as cringe as it might sound, my first thought when I saw this were two little things. Uh, mythology, of course, and Pokemon. Yep, Pokemon. Uh, for those that don't know, Gyarados, uh, though it looks more like a sea serpent from like Norse or Greek mythology, in my personal opinion, it is inspired by the Chinese story of the Long Ming. I'm pretty sure I butchered that one, and I'm sorry. But it essentially talks about a carp that was able to jump over a waterfall after many, many, many attempts. And because of the fact that he persevered, that he kept on going and tried hard and hard and hard until he achieved it, 
he was able to get the recognition of the gods. Because of this, they transformed him into a dragon and he became a symbol of strength and perseverance. It is also seen as a being of higher status, which can be very clearly seen through his animations, which are very graceful and, you know, of high class, I would like to say. Dan Hong has some unique animations as well for his own attacks, but they're like much different, so to speak. When he's Dan Hong, his animations are swift, but very choppy in a certain way. Not to say that they look bad. In fact, I think that the fast animation makes the skill look even more powerful and beautiful. But I say choppy in the way of like, it just sacrifices a lot of the gracefulness of his attacks. When you look at Imbibitor Lune's attacks, each and every single movement is done with a lot of grace and fluidity. There is motion, like water. So it all just feels like a continuous and very elegant attack in comparison to Don Hong's very aggressive one. If I had to give another example for what I want to essentially say is take an animation done with a sprite sheet versus an animation done in 3D, right? In this example, I'll be using footage for both Disgaea 4 and Persona 5. Specifically on two people that fight using martial arts, order fists, and kicks, right? In the one from Disgaea 4, you can see how all the movements are incredibly quick. They go from one frame to the other in like a single punch. But that's essentially just an instant movement. In Persona 5s, you see that the movements are more elongated. There's actual motion, even though they do do the technique of like, you know, the character teleports around or like moves very, very quick. Too quick for the eye to see to a certain extent. There's still a lot of movement, a lot of grace, a lot of detail into these attacks. And they're both amazing ways to display these attacks, like mind you. So I, don't know, I just like that they did that difference in movement for both versions of Dan Hong and Imbiber Lune. I also want to add that I adore the fact that for his Enhanced 2 attack, uh, he's able to summon spears. So that's a nice little nod to the fact that, you know, he's able to do these kinds of attacks. And also a lot of little nod that I like about, you know, Dan Hong and Imbiber Lune being connected is the maple leaf in Imbiber Lune's flash art. There's only one. But it's still, you know, the one that is essentially always prominent throughout new Don Hong's design. So, yeah. Also, a quick little fun fact. This year may be the year of the dragon that we're coming into, but its element is not of water. In fact, right now it is the year of a wood dragon. 2012 was a water dragon year, meaning that one of my dogs is essentially a mini Don Hong now, and I am happy to get to know that knowledge. And in case you're watching this on Saturday 10th of February, so tomorrow, by the time that this video should be getting posted, uh, Happy Lunar New Year, hope you all have an amazing day, and I wish you all the best. Also throughout his design, we can see the Lotus Flower, which is very prominent and evident in his clothing as well as his attack patterns. Personally speaking, I just adore the fact that it is in his overworld attack, as well as his enhanced 0, 1, and 2 attacks whenever he takes action in combat. We even see it in his clothing, which I personally feel like it's an amazing little detail and just makes him look that much more elegant. However, I will not deny though that I am a bit disappointed that he still retained the same phone case that he did last time, with which, which is just a black case cover. And I can't say much, because mine is literally black too. I just would have wanted to see the cool Lotus design even more so. So, sue me. Still, I do find it quite wonderful that he is associated to the Lotus flower, given the fact that these are some types of flowers that shift around during the day and night. Uh, as a matter of fact, throughout the day, they will, they will bloom and look quite graceful, but once the night arrives, these flowers are once it closed and then they hide themselves by sinking under the water. 
where they can be safe and sound. And I feel like this also has some kind of relations to him being a Vidyatara. We can see in Skill Gorge Waterscape that a lot of the Vidyatara eggs are just lying around the area, and they've been there since the whole area was flooded, which essentially kind of implies that the Vidyatara eggs are still able to hatch, even after being, you know, submerged for so long, now that Don Hong, their light, has arrived. And I also like the fact that there's this parallel with rebirth that happens with the Lotus Flower and the Vidyatara in this scenario. Now that they're able to get out of the water, the Vidyatara eggs, you can still see through dialogue options that they're looking forward to coming out. They're looking forward to their new life, or they might be escaping their previous lives. They also have this concept of, I want a new start. I want a fresh start. And you could kind of relate that to the concept of purity that comes with Lotus Flowers. Additionally, the fact that in, Be in Bibiter Lunay's E6 show him, shows him in his own, his own rebirth in case in an egg awaiting his new life is just such a cool little detail that I personally adore. Something else that we know that heavily represents in Bibiter Lune is the fact that he has the design of the moon. And personally, again, on top of that being his name, I love the association of this mainly because he's a water dragon. This is because the moon is the reason we have a tidal force, essentially saying that the moon has control over the waves and therefore control over the ocean. So that honestly just makes the, you know, the scene at Skill George Waterscape that much cooler to me. The more I think about it, the more I like analyze it, it just feels incredible, especially with like the music where in, in Bibiter Lune parts the sea and reveals the area. It is so well made and so well done. It's just beautiful. And I feel like that just makes me adore the lore. Both of the Vidyadara and the Laofu. That much more. On top of that. Uh, though this my next point might be a little bit of a stretch. I am not going to lie. I do find it cool that even though Blade, Jin Liu and Don Hong are like united by the destruction path, but they're excluded from Jin Yuan, who's still in the erudition. The three people that abandoned the Lao Fu are now destruction, while Jin Yuan is still, well, I'm not sure if he was the path beforehand, but he's erudition, right? It's interesting how there's that divide. However, I felt like there's a way to connect them all to the moon. And I may be coping out of my mind, but just hear me out for a sec. The two obvious ones that I don't feel like I need to go into detail being related to the moon, of course, are Jing Liu and Mbibature Lune, because they have very clear representations throughout their entire fucking design. However, moving forward, there's a way that we can kind of connect Blade, Bai Hong, and Jin Yuan to it. Starting off with Bai Hong, as a Foxian, she is distantly related to the Borisans, which are a species of like canine beings that can shapeshift via moon madness. These are the dogs that we fight in like just combat. Those ones that like either multiply themselves, call for, call for allies, or sometimes like advance forward enemies by like, you know, whenever they like perish. And the thing is, they again, like they're like related distantly to the Foxians, Baihang being one of these. However, what I will say, and this is kind of a disclaimer, is that it, it, they show that it, this is a rare case for Foxians, and that Yao Qing Foxians are unable to perform this, which Baihang is one of them. So again, I'm giving a lot of stretches here. In the case for Blade, we see that his flash art is during the night. And there is a moon that is very evident that it is there. However, whenever he uses his ultimate, that moon is nowhere to be seen. Not even like behind where he would normally attack. 
And I personally want to just make my own assumption that that is because he is looking for the moon. But obviously, Don Hong, being the moon, is not wanting to show himself to him. Is being hidden by all the clouds in his ultimate animation. And it just, it just feels like a perfect little nod. I'm not sure if they were actually going for that, but hey, I'm going to take it as such because I like the concept of it. And as for Jin Yuan, again, the bigger stretch I feel, but the one I'm going to go for is the fact that he had Snow Moon, a very relevant case to his own character, uh, even, even to that point that he appears in Jin Yuan's splash art. It holds some significance that is important. And I will take it as such. Because this lion waited for so long and he cared for Jin Yuan so much, even until the point of his death. So yeah, I just find that to be perfect. I also love the fact that throughout his kit and his outfit, the moon is also very representative. Mainly the fact that in his splash art, you can see a moon be as clear as day. His ultimate shows this amazing shot of him looking down on enemies right before unleashing his attack where the moon is used behind him as the only light source which is absolutely wonderful and this also kind of gives even more power to that contrast between light and darkness that Imbibitor Lune has that just makes it so much more potent in my personal opinion and I don't know, the, the coloration of gold and black just fits so well and also is so perfect for me to segue into the next topic of conversation, yin and yang. The concept of yin and yang is definitely something that characterizes in Bibature Lene perfectly. In his time in the High Cloud Quintet, we saw that he did a lot of good for the people in the Fianso Alliance, but he also ended up doing a lot of bad in the people's eyes. Despite everything for as heroic, noble that he might have done, he still ended up committing an unforgivable sin by saving Blade's life. He still ended up being labeled the traitor of the Lao Fu. And overall, it's just insane how well it represents that the concept that in kindness there's evil, in evil there's kindness, but that is just how life is. We can also see the concept of yin and yang through the colors of his animations, his tags, you're a mix of black and gold, which would represent yin and yang energies respectively. More notably, the fact that these black strokes of ink are still seen in Dan Hang's animations shows us that he's still associated with the moon, he still carries yin energy alongside him, but he has completely abandoned all the positive energy that would be coming from the sun and yang energy, which is needed to balance these two things out. And it still shows us that he's able to have this connection with himself throughout the entire thing. It is also very thematic how Dan Hong's best in slot light cone is called brighter than the sun where he is depicted after his rebirth, chained but still with a lot of determination and power behind him. However, it would make sense that after such an atrocity, not even knowing why he's being in prison or why he's being punished, he would abandon all the positivity and honestly just being very pissed off and very gloomy. So that just gives you a perfect explanation as to, you know, why he is the way that he is. And finally, and possibly the most evident thing that uh, relates in Bibiter Lune to Yin and Yang is the fact that his sphere is literally adorned in a coloration and design that makes contrast with both colors. It looks like an orb made for this Yin and Yang concept. I mean, through it, he's able to tap into these like higher powers. He's able to stack up energy and essentially kind of store it through the use of his ultimate we see that he even gets these special stats that he can use freely whenever he wants to empower himself 
up to a maximum of three times. And in the last one, he's able to summon a literal water dragon, which would be his final form, his maximum power to decimate and obliterate enemies with so much ferocity, elegance, and a magnificent display that I personally adore to watch every single time. So yeah, in all honesty, this video was a lot longer than I anticipated. It was a lot of fun to do the research and look into things and I do apologize if a lot of my thoughts had been like all over the place. I know that that doesn't make things the most like simple and best for the experience. So if you've made it all the way to this point of the video, hey, thank you for surviving. And thank you for sticking around and listening me to be ramble on about like so many like random different things. Uh, I really do appreciate it. If you do enjoy this sort of content though and you want to see more, please be sure to hit that sub button. I promise you won't regret it. It's free, it only takes us a second. And if you feel like I'm not like the type of content creator that it's good for you, or if you just feel like I'm like dropping my quality, you, you can always just unsubscribe whenever you feel like it. Just, just want to say thank you for all the support and all the care, all the amazing comments that you guys just send. You are absolutely wholesome and amazing, and I'm very lucky to have found myself in this corner of the community of Honkai Star Rail. Genuinely, you all are incredible. If possible, I would love to know what your opinions on Vibrature Lune are, or who are even like your favorite characters. I genuinely adore listening to people's different perspectives on these things. And yeah, with that being said, I hope you'll have a wonderful and amazing rest of your days. I'll see you on the next one, and depending on your time zone, good day, good night, good morning, and uh, yeah, bye.